In this lecture, you'll see how to build our second ONTAP simulator cluster. The reason that we want to have two different clusters is so that later we'll be able to practice SnapMirror and SnapVault. That's our ONTAP data replication features. So to be able to practice moving the data around, we want to have two different clusters to do that. Okay, let's see how to build the cluster. I'm working from my how to build a NetApp ONTAP lab PDF as usual. And the section we're going to be working from here is the ONTAP simulator build for C2N1. So I'm going to be working through the steps here. First thing I want to show you is the difference in the networking on cluster two. So let's have a look at the lab topology diagram and you can see that on cluster one, both nodes had exactly the same networking configuration. They were connected to VMNet 6 for their cluster network. They are connected to VMNet 1 for the management network. And then on the data network, that was on VMNet 2 and also separately on VMNet 7. For cluster 2, we've just got that single node and it's connected to different networks. Apart from it's also connected to VMNet 1 for management. So it's also going to have an IP address in the 172.23.1 network for that management traffic. But the other networks are different. So the cluster network is on VMNet 8 and the data networks are VMNet 3 and VMNet 9. So the networking settings in VMware here are going to be different than they were for our cluster 1 nodes. Okay, let's get that set up now. So first thing I actually need to do is to make a folder in Windows Explorer for this. So I'm back in my NetApp Lab folder and I'll create a new subfolder here, which is going to be called C2N1 for cluster 2 node 1. Then I want to actually build a node. So let's open up VMware Workstation Player. And then when this opens, you're going to see the build is going to be really similar to how it was for cluster one, node one. So I'll click on open a virtual machine. And again, I'm using the OVA file, which is in the cluster one, node one folder. Again, I don't need to copy this into the new folder I just created. I only need one copy of this on disk. So I'll double click on the OVA file. And the name for my virtual machine is going to be C2N1. And I want to save it in the folder that I just created. So that was in NetApp Lab and then C2N1. Click OK there and then click on Import. So this will take around a minute or so, probably not even that long to import the virtual machine. It's then going to be ready to run, but before I do run it, I'm going to want to go and configure those networking settings. So let's do that now. I'll click on edit the virtual machine settings and the network configuration. The first network adapter, E0A, is connected to the cluster network. So for cluster two, that was VMNet8. And it was the same on the second network adapter as well. E0B is also going to be in VMNet 8. The third network adapter is E0C, which is connected to our management network. So that is VMNet 1. And then the next one was our first data network, which was VMNet 3. And I need to add another couple of network adapters here. So I'll click on Add, Network Adapter, and Finish. And again, add network adapter and finish. And as usual, that makes the order messed up. So to reset that, I'll click on OK and then click on edit the virtual machine settings again. And I can see these are now in the correct logical sequence. So network adapter five is also in VMNet three. And finally, network adapter six is in VMNet nine. 
and I'll click out of there and check that that all looks good. Yep, that looks fine. I can now click on OK and play my virtual machine. And I'll make this go full screen for you. Now, if you remember when we configured cluster one node two, we had to set a different serial number on there because you can't have two nodes in the same cluster with the same serial number. It'll throw an error message if you do that. This is a different cluster now though, so we don't need to change the serial number. So I can carry on booting as normally here until I get the prompt to hit control C to enter the boot menu to factory reset. I can see I'm getting the prompt now, press control C. So I will hit control C and then we will give us a minute or so to load the boot menu. So I'll pause the video now and get back to me when we're ready to move on. Okay, boot menu has loaded and the same as I did on the first two nodes, I'm going to choose option four to clean configuration and initialize all disks. We'll have to wait a few seconds here again as usual and it will then give me the prompt to check that I definitely am sure that I really want to do that. It should be coming up any second now. There we go. So it asks, do I want to zero the disk, reset the config and install a new file system? I say yes. And it then says, am I sure I want to erase all of the data on the disks? And I say yes again. So that will now do the factory reset and it will reboot the node. This will take a minute or so to come back up. So I'll pause the video again and we'll get started again when it's finished rebooting. Okay, system is back up and I can see it's welcoming me to the cluster setup wizard. So I will type yes to continue as normal. The node management interface port is E0C, so I can hit enter here to accept the default. The node management address I'm going to use on cluster 2 node 1 is 172.23.1. It's the same management network. And for cluster 2 node 1, I'll use .22. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. And the default gateway is the BIOS router interface at 172.23.1.254. It's then going to tell me to press enter to continue setting up at the command line. So I will do that and it asks, am I creating a new cluster or joining an existing one? Well, this is a new cluster, cluster two. So I'm going to create and do I want it to be a single node cluster? I'll say no. And then yes, I do want to accept the defaults on the network settings. Then it asks me to enter the cluster administrator's password. I'll use flatbox1 with a capital F and then retype that. And try it again because I made a typo there. And there we go. I finally managed to type that in without a typo. All right, so now it is going to create the cluster interfaces for me. This will take around about 30 seconds to a minute. So let's pause again and we'll come back when the cluster interfaces are up. Okay, we're back and I'm asked for the cluster name. This is cluster two. And it is going to create the cluster for me. And it has to start up some services here. So this will take a little bit of time again. So I'll pause again and we'll start again when this is ready to go. Okay, the node settings are done and the system is now ready for me to enter the cluster settings. Starts off by asking me if I want to enter any additional license keys. No, I'm not going to do this here because I would have to type them in manually. It would be quite tedious. It's going to be a lot easier to copy and paste with Putty later. And I need to have the system set up before I can connect with Putty. So I'll just hit enter there to not enter any license keys right now. Then it asks me for the cluster management interface port. It defaults to E0D, which is wrong. We are on E0C for the management network. So I enter that. The cluster management IP address we're going to use is 172.23.1.21. So it's .11 for cluster 1, .21 for cluster 2. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. 
and the default gateway is 172.23.1.254 so I can just hit enter to accept that the DNS domain name is again flatboxa.lab okay, so both cluster 1 and cluster 2 are using the Windows server in department A as the DNS server so flatboxa.lab for both clusters and the same IP address of 172.23.4.1 that is going to be the IP address of the Windows server, which we haven't built yet. Where is the controller located? This is just for information only. I'll enter flatbox-lab. And then that is the cluster setup wizard completed. So ask me to log in. My username is admin. And my password, which I'll try to get right first time this time, is flatbox1. Okay, next thing I need to do is add all of the disks to this node. So the command for that is storage disk assign dash true is all. Actually, sorry, it's storage disk assign dash all is true the other way around. And then the dash node is cluster 2-01. Next thing that I'm going to do is make sure that vol0 doesn't run out of space. So I'm going to make sure that there's no snapshots there filling it up. To do that, I say run local and then delete any snapshots that have already been created. So that is snap delete dash A for all dash F for force and that is on vol0. And then to make sure that any are not created, I'm going to do my snap sched for the schedule and that is on vol zero and then i say zero 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 to say don't take any snapshots of it then i can exit out of here and that's me done that is my second cluster built and let's just check that we can connect to it so i will break out of here and go to firefox and for my second cluster it's going to be https 172.23.1.21 and hit enter and i'm going to get the certificate warning again so i click on advanced add an exception get the certificate and confirm the security exception and i can see that it is going to connect to the dashboard now in system manager so that is all good Again, I don't need to add any extra disks for cluster two or do anything extra. It's really just here so I can practice snap mirror and snap vault. Okay, last thing that I need to do is to shut it down. So the way I'm going to do that again is by suspending it. I'm not going to power it off. So I go back to my VMware window, click on player, go to power and suspend the guest. Okay, so that's it done that is cluster 2 built see you in the next video